this ought to be a great game. Uh, both teams, uh, like we talked about in pregame, uh, have got there's some serious playoff implications here. Uh, the playoffs work, uh, Dan, uh, the, the uh, United States is divided into four geographical regions. The RMAC is, uh, is in the Super Region 3 with the North Central Conference as well as the uh, Great Lakes Athletic Conference. Six teams are going to be to the playoffs or earn their way into the playoffs after next week. And uh, first two teams, uh, one and two get buys uh, with uh, three and four hosting. And then uh, it's, it's, it is seeded, and uh, we do have a true national uh, playoff championship. Pat Kane is a referee again today. I think he's on payroll now. <laughs> Ironically, the way the schedules worked out, we've had this crew for several of our RMAC games of the week. So the playoff picture is uh, if Shadron wins, wins next week, they probably should host a first-round playoff game. Turn on their seeding, they, they would probably have to go on the road if they are seeded three or four. Uh, Mesa, however, uh, you need to win the game in, Carney in, order to, in order to have any chance of playoffs. Now, one more thing you got to we got to mention, uh, Dan, in terms of the RMAC, the Rock Mountain Athletic Conference, is we do have a uh, a bowl game uh, there in St. George, Utah. The, they call it the Dick Bowl. So the highest placing uh, RMAC team that doesn't go to the playoff will earn a, a postseason bowl bid to that uh, Rotary Bowl in, in St. George, Utah. So a lot at stake here today. The bottom line: the two great teams, two really powerful offensive teams. Both coaches mentioned that they want to control the football to keep their opponents' offense on the bench. Looking for an outstanding game today. That's Tris Adder getting ready to tee it up here as the Mavericks will receive. Uh, Shattern has not lost an Armac game in 25 games, uh, Dan. They come in with a huge streak. I believe the last time they lost was back in 2005. So Mason would like nothing better than that streak here today in Grand Junction. Travis Adder. Kick taken at the 10 and pounded down at the 25-yard line by Maurice Threets. And here's how Mesa State stacks up on offense. Well, they're, le they're led there by uh, Mr. Widry, who uh, got a lot of plus time by having his uh, little pink amputated. On a uh, back to receiver for Mesa State, obviously led by uh, Coy and their fine quarterback, uh, B. Hill. Joey Oppelhans brought the kick back for 16 yards. And here come the Mavericks on offense, led by Phil V. Hill, the senior quarterback out of Arvada, a stacked eye behind him. Receivers left and right as we get an offense, and V. Hill is bottled up for a loss on the first play of the game. Here's the defense for Shadron. Uh, they are they are led by uh, the uh, defensive tackle, Mr. Ide, number 98, and. The linebackers, uh, there, Mr. Bailey in the middle, number 86, uh, does a great job as a middle linebacker. And in, this, in the secondary, they're led by Trevor ha uh, Hyatt. At three interceptions last week. Yeah, in one game. That's, that's a career for a lot of people. This is second down and 13. And Coy is taken down. And back to the original line of scrimmage by Aaron Bauer, the linebacker out of Shadron. Senior with the tackle and third down and long coming up for the Mavs. Phil V. Hill, the quarterback out of Faith Christian High School. He is 112 for 204 in the passing department, 112 completions, seven interceptions on the year. Pressured and incomplete. Intended for the Mavericks wide receiver Ricky Noble, who we saw play quite a bit, a big role in the game that we had there in Golden a few weeks ago. Yeah, he did uh, three out for the Shattern defense. Obviously, a great way for them to start, and and uh, they, they're going to get good field position pending the outcome of this punt. Uh, from Mesa's perspective, obviously not a, w a way that they want to start the game by. They, Coach Romano talked about field position, or, uh, or ball control. It's a good Mesa State roll, and it dies at the 23-yard line. Will be down at the Check Eagles out the Eagles on offense here, led by Joe McClain, a quarterback, but first the off line. Out there by the, uh, the center, Chance Gaby.
John Ritson, who's the uh, running back, son of the wrestling coach there at Shadmer State. So here is Joe McClain in the shotgun, 20th in D2 passing efficiency entering the game today, but only second in the RMAC, ironically, behind Jake Spitzelberger of Nebraska Kearney. He's got him spread out on first down, and that's a big pickup down the sideline and out of bounds. Big gain on first down for Shadron as we check out the Mavericks on the defensive side. That was Brandon Harrington with the reception. Defensive line led there by Albert, Alberto Rodriguez for 98. The uh, defensive backs uh, feature uh, Kadavi, Kadavi, who's uh, leading the team in tackles, ranked quite, uh, high up in the arm act for total tackles. And the secondary, uh, Aaron Sil uh, Silverthorne, the strong safety. So Harrington out of bounds, way back at the 32 or 31 yard line. And now Evan Pilkington gets the pitch and he gains about a yard or two, leaving the Eagles with third down, third down and short here. Pilkington last week against Mines had 112 yards and a touchdown. And a, a new wrinkle for the Eagles last week. They've got a lot of weapons. Big play here for the Mesa defense. Third and short. Inside handoff, and it's going to be enough for the first down. Well, it's going to be close, Dan. I think by they're going to spot it here. I think he's going to have that. In fact, they're not even going to measure. Now well, he did get it. Pilkington on the carry. Pilkington is a redshirt freshman out of Longmont, Colorado. Averaging five and a half yards a carry. Shatter's empty the backfield, going with no backs, five, five quick receivers. Send out of Wheat Ridge, Colorado, on the stop. Joe McLean, Armac Academic Player of the Year. Not only coach can he throw the ball, has 22 touchdowns, over 2,000 yards passing, but also can run it. 125 yards on the ground for Joe McLean. Makes the defense was licking their chops on that one. Anytime you run your quarterback on a draw, they're going to want to try to, you know, let them, let the, you know, make him pay the price for running that football. Second and seven, and the pass is batted away. Tremendous play on the defensive side. That's Steve Spencer uh, McAdoo there, outstanding uh, job on his part. They, they, uh, they, they came back on that bubble screen that they ran on first down on their first play uh, for the drive, and uh, it's a nice play by McAdoo. He got up and, and batted the ball down. Well, one of the problems in being 5'9", a quarterback, kind of tough to throw it over some of those tall guys. Yeah, he, he's got to look for throwing lanes, given his height, talking about the lane here. That's Isaac Stockton in motion. McLean rolls, throws, pass is caught for another Eagles first down by Brandon Harrington. Right around the 48-yard line, Sean Matheson on the coverage. That was a gain of eight yards, and the Eagles with uh, another first down here. Well, that's one thing that uh, they like to do, that Coach uh, Avoya likes to do with McLean is roll him out. Uh, and, and this is a hard throw, going to your left and, and then throwing uh, to a receiver. That, again, shows McLean's athleticism. Another throw here, and it's out of reach for Tyler Watson. Joe McLean, he's out of Shadron. Went to Shadron High School, 5'9", 168-pound senior. Got a lot of seniors on the Shadron team. They've got some work to do for next year, but, but that's not what they're worried about right now. Right. And again, they've got they've got a tradition going there at Shadron. They, they recruit very well. They've had some uh, wonderful summer camps where they get lots on campuses and uh, show prospects, prospects what they can offer there at Shadron. Playing with time and pass on target. That was John Poston. was out there on the receiving side. 
Mesa State rush three, drop eight into coverage. They're running, uh, you know, five uh, five men sh uh, short zones there, and it's making it very difficult for McLean and receivers to find any open lanes to throw into. You try to keep them off balance, about, off balance by rushing, uh, changing up your rush drop combinations. McLean standing at his own 43-yard line, ready to get the snap. Some movement up front, no flags. McLean rolling, McLean looking. And's going to throw it high and out of bounds. Pass intended for Isaac Stockton out of Colorado Springs in Mitchell High School. So fourth down coming up for Shadron as the drive stalls. On that one, uh, the defensive uh, in for uh, Mesa allowed McLean to break, contain, and buy more time. Obviously, the defensive coordinator, uh, Rubidoux for Mesa, will talk to their defensive end about you know keeping him inside the pocket and not allowing him outside uh, to buy more time. This is Kevin Berg getting the pick away to Griffith Chernock, who will let it bounce, and it's going to die right around the 20-yard line. Mesa State will get the ball for the second time today with no score here in the first quarter. And a good job by the Mesa State defense, five that appeared to be heading towards the end zone, but stalls right around midfield. You get the sense uh, that it's you know, two prize fighters feeling each other at first series. 21 yard line is where the Mavericks set up on offense. The maroon, black, and white trim uniforms. V Hill trips and is down inside the 15 yard line. Let's welcome in our third member of the group today, Matt Hill, down in the field here. Uh, you know, agree on many things, but I talked to both head athletic trainers, and they said that both teams are very, very healthy. They said they have a couple nicks, a couple bangs, a couple bruises, but they said, you know, nothing that they can't fix. Well, uh, both teams pretty healthy, and it shouldn't uh, cause any problems today. Back to you guys. All right, Matt, and a handoff straight up the middle for a couple of yards, Bobby Coy. Excellent field position. So right there for the Mavericks. Goes a left tackle out of Lewis Palmer High School in Colorado Springs. Another handoff for a little game by McCoy. With the area and Aaron Hyde, the defensive tackle, a senior out of Holdridge, Nebraska. On the tackle and fourth down coming up for Mesa State. And Mesa's having a hard time getting their running game established. Of course, you know, they... They gave away that first play when, when B. Hill sna uh, slipped there on that initial snap, snap of that drive. Ooh, snap, and the kick is away, nearly blocked. And taking it at the 39-yard line is Justin McCabe for Shadron State. So good field position for the Eagles. 41-yard punt, and Shadron State has the ball at their own 39-yard line. Well, the Eagles coach looking for their third straight RMAC title. No team in the 100-year history of the RMAC has gone three straight seasons without losing a conference game. Well, that's good of the, the program that they've built there at Chatter State, a lot of tradition. There is the pitch for a positive game there to Elvin, Evan Pilkington. He's getting a lot of chances in this game and last week like we said 112 yards and a touchdown against Mines for Pilkington at Longmont, Colorado. Well Catherine is deep at running back inside Pilkington you see here that you know they got John Ritson, Ritson and then they got Aaron Cooksley. That was a six yard pickup on first down. And McLean is under center. But, but Ritson behind him. Gets the pitch. Ritson running left. First down and more. Ritson down the sideline. One man to beat. Ritson is going to be bumped out of bounds into the five-yard line. A touchdown saving stop by John Matheson. But John Ritson comes up huge with a big gain, and the Eagles are knocking on the door. 
This was a counter sweep. And a key block here by Finnerty, number 55 for Shatter, leads the way and was allowing Ritson to, to uh, break that off tackle. The old counter tray. 47 yards on that right, John Ritson, averaging under five yards a carry, just under five yards a carry. And now first and goal for Shadron. Gives to Ritson straight up the middle, gets one or two yards, and is swallowed up by the Mavericks defense, led by Cody Walker, inside linebacker out of Grand Junction here. Well, Mesa now is hoping they can hold Scattern to a field goal attempt and get out of here uh, only being down three. Real challenge of the defense here. Thank you folks that have shown up from Shadron for this game today here in Grand Junction. That's quite a trip. Second down and goal. Ball resting at the five yard line. And uh, Maverick is offsides. Free play for the Eagles. And Ritson is in for the touchdown. Dominique Applehans jumped offside. But Ritson runs it in. And the Eagles take the lead. Well, there you see the senior leadership from your veteran quarterback, McLean. there. He's able to top the Mavericks offside. Actually, you get a free play. So a heavy dose of Ritson on that drive, Coach. Well, and, there, and again, you got to hand to that offensive line. They're, they're doing a great job. This is simple of zone play here, and Ritson's able to find the seam. McLean holding for the extra point try by Travis Adder. Adder, a junior out of Buffalo, Wyoming. 12 for 15 in the field goal department this year, and Adder kicks it through, and it's a 7-0 lead for Shadron State as John Ritson takes it in. A six-yard run for the touchdown, and the Eagles have the lead. Gorgeous day and a gorgeous view here in Grand Junction. 7-0 Eagles. Let's head downstairs with Matt Bell. Matt? Hey, guys. John Ritson just scored that touchdown, and uh, you know what? He has rushed for 129 yards a game. That is his single-season high. But the uh, interesting thing is the fact that John Ritson or any other running back on the team, the three-headed attack of Ritson, Aaron Cooksley and Evan Pinkston, uh, or Pil Pilkington, sorry about that, it's kind of a mess up there, but uh, anyways, none of those guys have rushed for more than one touchdown in a game, so it looks like Ritson might be done with uh, rushing TDs unless he can break that streak today. Thank All right, Matt, thank you. Joey Appelhans brings back the kick for 27 yards, and the Mavericks will have the ball for the third time on the day. Doesn't that speak to the talent of Danny Woodhead? They got a two-time Harlan Hill winner, uh, and it takes three young men to replace him. Ball marked at the 33-yard line. Let's see if the Mavericks can answer here. Now the Mavericks are going with four quicks, getting away from their uh, their full full eye, eye formation. By the way, officially that was a five-yard run by Ritson. A total of four plays arrived for 61 yards. Two minutes and five seconds the clock. Hand off and a big gain on first for the Applehans. Applehans out of Thornton, Colorado. Gets the ball on first down. His brother Dominic is a defensive end on this Mavericks team. Okay, here you see they spread. They put Bobby Coy, uh, spread him out, and they're trying to spread the, the uh, Eagle defense out and create some running lanes, and it worked there. He a nice uh, six, seven-yard gain. Ball just shy of the 40-yard line. Second down and four for the Mavericks. That's Chris Means, the fullback in motion. And Hill was going for Means, but the pass is tipped away. Third down coming up. That was uh, Jared Kester who applied, got the pass tipped away by Kester, I beg your pardon, the defensive end out of Pete's, Colorado. Six-man football there, Pete's High School. Big third down here. Straight ahead give. First down over midfield. 
and down near the 45 yard line, flags are thrown. Big carry by Bobby Coy, and we'll check out the 15 yard pickup. Well, obviously, uh, Mr. Wickery is back. He ran right over him, the all conference first team lineman. Uh, Looks look, look to me like that uh, amputated little finger affecting his play. And that's going to tack on 15 more yards for the Mavericks. So they are setting up nicely here. And that's down, down 7 nothing. That's the best way to attack uh, the, the Eagle defense is right at them. Mano a mano, your, your best uh, third leading rusher in the nation, Bobby Coy, attacking you head on. So the ball all the way down to the 31 yard line of Chadron. And V Hill is under center. Yeah, they've uh, emptied the backfield here as well. Got Bobby Coy split out wide. First time I've seen them running no back. Over the middle pass is incomplete. Justin Murray, if he could have hung on, he had the end zone straight ahead, but unable to pull it down and second down forthcoming. Yeah, that would have been awful, awful difficult catch, uh, but uh, uh, Vio put a lot of a lot of heat on this ball and just just off the hands but you're right he catches that he's uh, he, he walks into the end zone v hill now 0 for 3 in the passing department that's chris means the fullback in motion straight ahead give to coy and coy gets back to the line of scrimmage maybe a yard gain but not much more against that shadron defense aaron eyed leading the way defensive tackle out of Holdridge, Nebraska. Well, they came back with a little fullback trap uh, with Coy. Uh, Shadron played a nine-man front, uh, a nine-man in the box type of a, a defense, and uh, that's an awful tough, tough defense to run against. Jay Maduna also went on the tackle. He had more of Coy than did Hyde, but uh, third down here, third down and long. Pressure on Hill has attempt again, and incomplete. Ended for Griffin Sherman. So a good defensive stand by the Eagles after the big game and then the penalty at the end of the game by Bobby Coy on that huge run and the drive stalls and we'll see what Joe Romano has in mind here. Pass tipped away. And fourth down coming up. That was Zach Zanstra who tipped away that pass. And now a field goal try. It's going to be... 47 yards on the attempt here by Jared Keating. Plenty of foot, but is it enough? Just enough for Keating. Keating, who had a long of 41 yards coming into the game today, betters that with a long one here, and the Mavericks are on the board. Down by four in the first. Eagles take the kickoff back. Brandon Harrington returns it for 12 yards, and the Eagles on offense now at their own 22-yard line. Keating with a 47-yard field goal. Jared Keating, as we watch the return here on the kickoff by Harrington. But Jared Keating with a 47-yard field goal, his longest of the year. Previous long was 41 yards, and this is a guy that the NFL scouts are looking at. Yeah, that was huge. They needed to come away with some points, get a little momentum, and answer that touchdown to Shatter. Young man stepped up and uh, just put it over the crossbar. Just had enough. So a four-point game with Shatter and State on top. They mark it at the 23, maybe the 24-yard line. Straight ahead give and nothing there. John Ritson on the handoff, and he was taken down immediately. Red. That's Kadavi coming in, coming off the edge there. It's a big play by your, by your, uh, your senior linebacker, Kadavi, at a Greeley Central High School, leads the Mavericks in tackles with 70. Another one there. He also has three sacks on the year. No gain on the play. Shatner's now is back in their two-back offense. There's the pitch, and a pretty good game by Ritson there as he gets it out over the 30-yard line. Four yards shy of the first down, maybe three yards shy, depending on the mark. 
To say Ritson's a tough kid as well in that, in that mold of the Nebraska player. His dad's a wrestling coach, head wrestling coach at uh, Shattern, Dr. Scott Ritson. Proud of his son, I would, I would imagine. So face third are the Eagles. McLean standing at his own 25-yard line. Trying to get the Mavericks to jump, and the pass is caught for a first down. That's Tyler Watson. Watson of Riverton, Wyoming. And Sean Matheson on the stop, a 14-yard pickup. Josh Padilla, I beg your pardon, with the tackle. Matt Bill has something for us, Matt. Jared Keating might just have a chance to play on Sundays. That 47-yard field goal showed why. He was named the Armac Preseason Kicker of the Year, Special Teams Player of the Year at the beginning of the year. And actually, NFLDraftScout.com, NFLDraftScout.com currently ranks Mason State kicker Jared Keating as the ninth best prospect in the entire nation. So he's got a great shot on playing on Sundays, but he keeps doing those 47-yard field goals. We know why. All right, Matt, here's McLean going deep. Ball is up and going to be caught. Flags are thrown. What a catch by John Toston. John Toston out of Clearwater, Florida. And going to be pass interference here. We'll see in which side. Pat Kane with the call, and it's going to be offensive pass interference. Josh Padilla was back on the coverage. That, that was a great catch. Uh, they must have caught him for a little push off here on this camera angle. I don't know if we're going to see it or not. Um, didn't, didn't show anything there, but maybe it was a... Uh, well, there you see a hand on the back right bit. there. A little bit of a push to get some separation. Right, that's if, they, if they see the open hand, uh, you know, you can get away with it if he uses his elbow. See the coach telling him, use your elbow to push off. If they see the open hand, generally they're going to get caught. A tough break there. Would have been a 30-yard instead. Now you're looking at first and 25. Have to get to Fort Lewis to get a first down here. Set up the screen to Ritson. Ritson needs to knock one of the Mavericks down, and Sean Matheson finally takes him out of bounds. It's a six, seven yard gain on first down, so they make up a little bit of the penalty. On this, they, they showed the bubble screen to the wide side with the three receiver side, and then they came back and ran the screen back to uh, Ritson's side on the left. Nice design play, but uh, Mesa defended it very well. Ritson, 20 catches coming in today for over 200 yards. He's a versatile guy. So they call it a five-yard gain, second down and 20. McLean steps up. McLean moving around. McLean throws incomplete. Looking for Brandon Harrington on the other end. And when you're 5'9", maybe even 5 as a quarterback, mobility, is awfully big because you got to be able to move around to yeah. find a passing lane, like exactly. you said earlier, right? Exactly. McLean does that quite well. Based on that one, they're down uh, rush three, and they manned up the five receivers underneath would play three over the top. Uh, it's an awful tough defense to uh, to throw into, as you can see. I was uh, the, they had them well covered. Third and a mile here, Dan. McLean two for seven so far. Rolling right, throws, flags are thrown as well. The pass is caught. Was he in bounds is the question. They're waving him in, Dan. Isaac Stockton with a great grab, but let's check out the flag here. I think Stockton is probably one of the most athletic uh, young men on this field. He uh, transferred to Shad from my state, and you can see, uh, see his athleticism. This is an outstanding catch, man. We'll see if it's negated by flag here. Pat Kane with the call. Yes, it will be. Pat Keen's microphone obviously not working today. Lock below the waist or chop. And so far, penalties have really... Yeah, two outstanding catches by uh, two receivers. Here's Look at this catch here by Stockton. I mean, that's an NFL caliber, caliber catch there. 7-3. 
Eagles lead. Mavericks with the ball at their own 27-yard line. And Phil V. Hill is under center. Going to hand it off to Coy. Coy over the 20, or make it the 30-yard line and down close to the 31. As time continues to wind down here first quarter, Craig Kaiser, the safety, with the tackle. Todd Hour, the defense coordinator for Shatter, continues to change up the defense front and, and uh, stunts by his linebackers. Keep, keep uh, the offense from Mesa guessing. Second down and a long six. Pass is caught. That's First a down and more. And bumped out of bounds is Justin Murray. Justin Murray with a swing pass and picks up 14 yards for a Mesa State first down. Nick Milani bumped him out of bounds. Yeah, Mesa, in this case, uh, Shadron was, was in a blitz, and they caught, caught him with this little screen out here where they had a two-on-two -two situation with a soft corner and good blocking out, out there at the point of attack. Ball at the 45-yard line. V. Hill pulls it down, and he's going to go down at the 40 line, swallowed up by the defensive line of the Eagles. And time running out here in the first quarter. Aaron Bauer gets credit for the tackle. Bauer out of Shatteron High School. Once again, Shatteron brought the blitz there, rush five, and uh, you know, good job there by uh, by the defensive front and getting pressure on Beal and getting the sack. So far, so good. We've got two teams that are battling for postseason play here. And we've got a good one at the end of one. Shadron on top by four. Another beautiful day here in the Valley. Grand Junction, Colorado. Hard to believe it's November 1st. And right now, the Eagles with the ball. Our bigger part of the Mavericks with the ball at their own 40 one yard line and this is Coy flags are thrown Coy turns the corner first down and more Coy is down near the 33 yard line of Shadron State it looks like this one's going to come back down we looks like you got a hold yep Mr. Kane's indicating holding 25 yard gain for Coy John Rickson has outdone Coy so far today in the first quarter with 62 yards for Ritson and Coy with 27 would have helped had he been able to pick up those 25, but it's coming back due to the holding pull. Matt Bill, what do you have for us? Hey, what you guys were just saying right there is so far, by the way, hasn't slowed down, only 27 yards rushing. Right now, Shadron State is getting exactly what they want. Right now, they are uh, only average, or they're holding teams to 57 yards rushing on defense. Mesa State, on the other hand, they like to run the ball right down the other team's throats. They're averaging over 196 yards a game rushing the ball. So if Mesa State wants to win, they need a steady dose of Bobby Coy and more of the running backs. Back to you guys. Thanks, Matt. Here's V. Hill, and he's going to give it off to Coy. Coy, good move, and bulls his way over the 40-yard line down at the 41. And taken down by Nick Milani, the safety. So Coy gets some of those penalty yards back. Ball resting outside the 41. Nine-yard pickup. This is what is impressive about Coy. You know, he's he's a hammer, not a nail. When he runs a football, he tries to dish dish something out uh, when he's being tackled. He's a punishing type of a runner. Only 5'9", 190-pound junior out of Littleton, Colorado. Went to Heritage High School, Bobby Coy. V. Hill rolling, trying to avoid the pressure. Throws, and the pass is broken up. Or is it caught? No, it is caught. What a catch by Ricky Noble, the young man out of Hawaii. I was talking to Coach Romano. This young man was a walk-on player for him. I told Coach Romano, you must be living right. What a fine player Noble is. Beal does a nice job of threading the needle, and Noble gets uh, hit pretty aggressively there but holds on to the football. Looked like Craig Kaiser was about ready to pick that thing off, dove in front of Noble, but somehow... V. Hill was able to get that ball into his receiver's numbers. So a huge gain. 
16 yards for the first down. Ball at the 43-yard line of Shadron. Fake the give. V Hill looking over the middle. Pass is caught wide open. 20, 15, and down at the 9-yard line. That was Seth Dameron. Seth Dameron on the receiving end, a 33-yard connection. It's a great call by uh, Mesa State. They went double tight ends and uh, an outstanding run fake to Coy, sucked the defense in from Shattern, and uh, the uh, tight end drag, drug across the middle when it was wide open. Beal did a nice job on that play, nice execution. Dameron out of Bakersfield, California. Of a big time gain there. V Hill to Coy, and Coy is followed up. On first and goal for the Mavericks, trying to punch it in and take the lead here. Oh, I tell you what, Dameron was wide open on that previous play. Nice yeah, connection the there, Aaron Bauer that time with the tackle on Coy. John Bauer is the offensive coordinator for the Mason Mavericks. Does, he's doing a nice job. There's a chain going on between him and the defensive coordinator for Shad and Todd Hour. That was a well-designed play. And uh, there's second down. And moving the pile straight ahead is Zach Bolani. Bolani, the fullback out of Wheat Ridge, Colorado, and Mullen High School. So third down. And goal coming up here for the Mavs. Ball at the three-yard line. Well, the Mavericks would love to come away with a touchdown here and go up 10-7. Uh, this is uh, one of our key plays in the first half here. So what do you do? Bobby Coy time, or do you roll out and try and find something in the end zone? Well, I, I think I think you use uh, Coy somewhere, whether you're going to hand it off to him or you're going to use him as an deceptive way, whether to bootleg away from the action. Well, they play pass. Just out of the reach of Ricky Noble in the back end of the end zone. Make that Maurice Manley, the tight end, was the intended target on that play. So fourth down, and up comes the field goal unit for Mesa State. Just a little bit high for Manley to pull it down. Manley had a... Central High School here in Grand Junction. So a field goal try for Jared Keating. Already has a 47-yarder today. This one's going to be much more makeable from the 10, a 20-yard attempt. And Keating, one of the top prospects for NFL scouts, kicks it through a 20-yard kick. Good-sized crowd on hand here at Stoker Stadium. Just behind us, I feel right at home, and you feel right at home checking out those burgers there, but uh, right behind us is Saplesio Field where they play baseball here. Literally, we just have to walk across the hallway and we see a nice, well-groomed baseball field named after the great, late Sam Saplesio. Here come the Eagles. Look out. Big return. Look out. And down at the 44-yard line is Maurice Threets. So after the Mavericks, Put three more up on the field goal by Keating to draw to within one. A big return by Maurice Threets out of Clearwater, Florida, setting up the Eagles on offense. A 35-yard return by Threets. Well, you see the uh, significance of the King game. They do, um, Shattern does a nice job of blocking at the point of attack, and really no one laid a hand on Threets until uh, he's tackled there close to midfield. Jared. Keating, the kicker, actually made the touchdown saving tackle. So here come the Eagles on offense, ball resting at their own 45 yard line. Here's the pitch, and a big hole. 40 yard line down at the 35 is Evan Pilkington. Pilkington gets the pitch, and a first down for the Eagles, a 20 yard gain on first down. Evan Pilkington, who had 112 yards and a touchdown last week against Mines, is back at it here today. What a hole. Yeah, you see the, the uh, multiplicity of the shattering offense there. A key block at the point of attack by Isaac Stockton, who went in motion, then back against the football and, and seal off the defensive end. Nate Dolan with that tackle there, the safety, and now the ball at the 34-yard line of Mesa State. Boy, the Eagles can strike at any time. Swing it out. And the pass is dropped. 
incomplete. That was Isaac Stockton who made a spectacular catch earlier in the game, but that one, he just didn't look into his hands. Yeah, he wanted to run with it before he caught it. It's close. Passes like this, sometimes, you know, they're close to being backwards. Obviously, that one's forward, so incomplete pass. Second down and 10 coming up for the Eagles. As we take a look at Stockton. And get the ball outside on the perimeter to these, these athletes that shatter, shatter and they can uh, result in big plays. Stockton in motion. Here's the pitch to the left side. And little there for Pilkington. He stopped for a short gain. Gain of one. So third down and nine facing the Eagles. Again, uh, they're trying to overload Mason to the short side here. Toss sweep, point of attack. Um, Mesa does a nice job. Brandon Weimeyer coming up from the safety position for a very short game. Third and nine. McLean back. Over the middle, pass is caught! What a catch! That appeared to be Stockton for a first down right around the 14-yard line. So Stockton makes up for the previous drop with a great grab. Well, they actually had to catch it twice. Oh, McLean stepped up there. The offensive line gave him good protection, and he rife ball in. Stockton and, uh, not happy with himself. Well, he should should not be uh, discouraged in his play. That was a, a fine catch. He'd like to caught it on the initial uh, catch, though, and rather than have to catch it on the tip. 20-yard pickup. And now you got trips right. Single setback appears to be Ritson. Gets the pitch, that's Pilkington, and he's going to be dropped for a loss on the play by Brent Bertsall, the linebacker out of Longmont, Colorado. That's the same play that uh, Ritson had his long run on in the first quarter, the counter sweep. And in this case, uh, Bertsall had it played very well. That's four. Brandon Bertsall to Longmont Heise, a senior here for Mesa State. Second down and 14 again, trips right. Pass is incomplete. Brandon Harrington couldn't hang on that time, so third down coming up for Shadron State. Ball's yeah. being dropped early on yeah. here, Coach. Well, Harrington, he would, you know, obviously would like to have this one back. Big pass, and just just didn't execute. And then he gets hammered. Might so as well catch it, right? Might as well catch it. Exactly. Very identical, almost identical to Stockton, except Stockton made his catch on the rebound, and Harrington didn't. McLean is 5 for 12 in the passing department so far. Big third down play here. Rolling right. McLean throws and it's out of bounds and incomplete. Joel Schomer, the receiver on the play. So fourth down and the field goal unit will come on and Travis Adder, another good kicker in this game. They'll spot it at the 25-yard line, so a 35-yard attempt near hash for Adder. McLean on the hold. Adder is 12 for 15 in the field goal department on the year. And he's going to put three more up for Shadron. 10-6. Eagles with the lead. That was a 35-yard field goal for Travis Adder. Both field goal kickers today have done a terrific job feeding an adder. Joey Applehans is back deep to receive. For Mesa State. That flags down Sean Matheson on the return. 14 yards on the return and Matt Bill is back with Another update, Matt. Hey, guys, you know what? It's just uh, kind of a funny story about Bill O'Boyle. He's kind of a big guy, so you might not think that uh, he's an artist, but he actually minored in art in college, and he actually paints the field at Shadron State. You might not see any paint on Mesa State's field. 
Maybe uh, head coach Bill O'Boyle could help them out, but you know what? He's not just an artist. He's in his third season here at Shadron State, and he's already the third winningest coach in Shadron State. If he went today, then, you know, he's just adding to the lore right now, but uh, he has had a whole lot of success in the RMAC. He's uh, looking to get another win today. Back to you guys. Thank you, Matt. Who would have known that big Bill O'Boyle was an artist, and this is going against Mesa State on the return. A hold will push him back. You ever well, do when you were coaching, Coach? Uh, no. Yeah, I couldn't even draw good X's and O's if you talked to the right people <laughs> that were critical of my coaching. But, uh, now, you know, Bill O'Boyle, he, he looks like he'd line up a play right now. That, Boy, and hard. they say teams manifest the personality of their coach, and he's, he's a tough hombre, and he coaches that offensive line, and, boy, they play for him. Would not want to go back to the sideline if I made a mistake <laughs> with that guy. Exactly. <laughs> Just his look alone would make you melt. Straight ahead give to Coy. Short gain on first down out over the 10-yard line. Second down and eight coming up for Mesa State. Austin Bailey on the stop. Approaching the eight-minute here in the half. And a good one so far with... The Eagles up by four. This time, V Hill is under center. We have a feature on the V Hill boys at halftime. Another straight ahead give, and I mean nothing there. Coy meets the brick wall of Shadron State, led by Aaron Ide, the defensive tackle. Call it again. Third down and seven. Now they're continuing to try and pound the ball. And, and again, Todd Hour, the defense coordinator for Shatter, is doing an excellent job of mixing up his fronts. He'll, he'll play a four-man front and make some personnel substitutions and then run, run a three-lineman uh, uh, front, which is, in, which is in now on longer downs. But then when, even when he shows a three-man front, he'll blitz those linebackers. And uh, I think it's caused a lot of confusion for the Mavericks at the point of attack. V. Hill. Uh-oh. Big play here. And a first down for Joey Applehans. Finally bumped out of bounds at the 26 and a half yard line. Applehans out of Thornton High School. Averaging over six yards a carry and a big one there. A little, little misdirection trap there. They caught uh, Shattern in a blitz and then executed that play uh, very well. 13-yard gain for the first down. They mark it at the 32, just outside the, or make it the 27-yard uh, line, I beg your pardon. V. Hill escapes pressure, and he's going to throw it away. Nice catch made by one of the guys standing on the sideline, but Justin Murray was the guy who was supposed to catch that pass, but no chance. You see both quarterbacks are veteran senior players. V. Hill for Mesa, McLean for uh, Shattern. A lot of poise. They don't get rattled much. You can see there, Beal was almost sacked, was able to get away from the, from the potential sack and roll out and buy some more time. V. Hill just one for seven so far in the passing department. There's a new formation from Mesa. They've gone to what they call a bunch trip set there on the left side. Pitch it back. And a pretty good gain. Flags are thrown. That was Bobby Coy on the carry. And we'll see if this stands or not. Looks like it's going to come back. I believe they got a flag here on Mesa. Got a face mask on the offensive side. Well, you don't see that very often. And that's going to set him back 15 yards. Yeah, that is that is not a, be a common call you see in football as offensive uh, face mask. So Joe Romano can't be pleased with that infraction. Well, we've had uh, several penalties already in the first half that have really affected drives by both teams. Joe Romano, two-time RMAC Coach of the Year back in 2000 and 2003, two RMAC titles under his belt in his 11th year for Mesa State. And second down and 20. V. Hill. And the pass is caught.
Justin Murray down the sideline. Murray is heading to the house. Touchdown, Mesa State. Two yards, V. Hill to Murray. Six up for Mesa State, and they take the lead. Well, he made up, the team did anyway, for the big penalty in a big way. 82-yard connection. And here's Keating for the extra point try. Keating pounds it through, and Mesa State, for the first time today, has the lead as Justin Murray takes it into the end zone. And the Mavericks with a three-point lead here in Grand Junction. Mesa State with a huge play, 83 yards officially on the connection from V. Hill to Murray. Five plays on that drive for 91 yards, only took two minutes and 39 seconds off the clock. Maurice Threets with the return here for the Eagles, who now trail. Threets uh, is going to try and get one guy. Goodbye. He's got him. Had one guy to beat. Threets down the far side of the field, and he's going to go in for the touchdown. 97 yards for Maurice Threets and so much for the Mesa State lead. Huge back-to-back -back plays. Isn't that awesome? That's a uh, just uh, outstanding execution here by the Shatter State Eagles on this kickoff return. Boy, you talk about taking the wind out of sails. Threats, what a job as he was able to keep his footing and the only guy he had to beat, one guy back there, and was able to take it down the sideline. That was the kicker, Jared Keating. 97 yards. And the extra point by Travis Adder. And just like that, the Eagles are back out on top in this one. And Matt Bill, I don't know if you can top that, but uh, Matt, all yours. Hey, you know what, guys? I don't know if I can top that, but uh, you know what? You would actually think that uh, Maurice Threat would be able to uh, return the ball a little bit more. He ranks sixth in the nation in Division II in kickoff returns, but he hasn't returned a kickoff for a touchdown yet this season. In fact, the last time Shadron State returned a kickoff for a touchdown was way back in 2003. So uh, this is something new for Shadron State, getting on the board with a quick score and uh, going up 17-13, but uh, they got a whole lot of weapons here on the kickoff return coverage. Boy, do they ever. Thank you, Matt. Well, I bet you his average is going to take a jump with that one. Officially 98 yards on the return for Threets. As they spotted him at the two when he took the kick. And he went all the way. So short-lived lead for Mesa State. We'll see how they respond with 535 remaining in the half. I'd like to know how Coach Boyle recruited the Aguilar man out of Florida. Who, who gets to take that recruiting trip? <laughs> You know, going back to the touchdown there at, that uh, Mesa had, and they had, they caught uh, Shattern in a blitz. And when you blitz, you're taking the chance of uh, you're manned up in the secondary. If you don't get to the quarterback, big plays can arise, and that's what resulted. And then we come back with a kickoff. So bang, bang, two, uh, two long runs here, or two, two long scores. What a football game. Travis Adder kicks it away. Got Applehans and Matheson, and Matheson takes it out of the end zone, and he's going to be tripped up outside or just beyond the 15-yard line down to the 17. And in games of this magnitude, you, a lot of times it comes down to special teams, and, and we can see evident of that, uh, the kickoff return, the, the field goals. Uh, two good teams slugging it out here. Seesaw game back and forth. Five and a half left before the half, and Mesa State has the ball at their own 18-yard line. That's Murray in motion. They give us Decoy straight up the middle. He's out over the 20 and down at around the 22-23-yard line, taken down by Trevor Hyatt, who actually leads the Eagles 
in tackles heading into today's game. Yeah, typically you don't want, want your safeties to be leading the team in tackles, but that young man plays a lot, you know, real close to the line of scrimmage on some of ours uh, defensive calls. It also is almost like a linebacker. Out of Lander, Wyoming is Trevor Hyatt. Pick up a four on the play. Give to the fullback. That's uh, Chris Means out of Grand Junction High School. Little, if any, gain on second down. Third down and six. Number 40, Chris Means Coming up. Pick up like one on the play. Call it a one-yard gain. So third and four, third and long four for Mesa State. Bill Vigil with that big connect with Justin Murray of 83 yards, and he pretty long on the year was 70, and this pass is tipped and incomplete. Trying to get it to Chris Means, the fullback, and Mesa State going to be forced to punt. Jay Maduna was the defensive end who got a piece of that pass. It's the second time they've tried to slip Means into the flat, and on, on both plays, uh, uh, the Eels had the ball tipped to the line of scrimmage. C.J. Smith, the punter. And the kick is 10 at the 28-yard line. And taken down immediately. Dustin McCabe received the punt. And the Eagles will take over on offense with just outside four minutes remaining in the half, leading by four. Action filled first half. Well, the, the Eagles are defending champions, and they're not going to go quietly. You can almost sense Mesa gets the lead, and uh, they answer with that long kickoff return. Uh, Mesa has had some uh, momentum established, and it's like they squelch the crowd. Fans trying to urge on the defense here. McLean barking out the signals, going to pitch it back, sweeping right, and gain of four or five yards on first down for John Ritson. Ritson's had a good half so far, and gets the pitch here. It's again, good blocking, point of attack, particularly by the receiving core there. You can get uh, six, seven yards on first down. It gives you a lot of... Uh, Flexibility on the on the on the on the second down. So the empty the backfield. Five receivers set. And Ritson, one of those guys in the slot to the left side, and now whistles are blown before the play can get underway. Haven't had a whole lot of penalties here in the first half. That's been a good thing. The ones we have had, though, have been significant. They've been pretty drive killers. Yeah. Pretty large, yeah. With the whole appeal, okay, it just reset the play clock, I believe. Second down and four. McLean at his own 30 yard line. And he's going to pull it down and run, and McLean is up in it. Maybe a game one. Taken down by Cody Walker, the inside linebacker out of Grand Junction. Yeah. Put him on him in high school. Nice play. Uh, again, predetermined draw play by McLean just to try to get enough for the first down. Getting inside of close to three minutes here. We should see Shattern go into their... their uh, Hurry up offense to try to get some points in before the end of the half. Third down and three. That's Stockton in motion. McLean rolling right. He's going to run. And McLean has a first down. Spins away from one guy and is down near the 44 yard line as McLean takes matters in his own hands. Number 13. Obviously not superstitious, and boy, has he really done the job all season long for these Eagles. Eight-yard gain. 
Mason's run on that three-man front, and number 98, Rodriguez, you know, actually bit inside and made it easy for McLean to get on the edge. Certainly something I don't think you want to do from a defensive standpoint for the Mavericks. Keep him contained. Clock ticking down here in the first half. Fakes the give. McLean going deep. And the pass is broken up at the 10-yard line. Brandon Harrington was the intended target. Double coverage led by Nate Dolan back there, the safety out of Reno, Nevada. Yeah, he had him. And uh, fortunately, the safety came over the top. Dolan, you can see right here on the replay, a good position and, and uh, comes over and breaks up the play. Sean Matheson also back there on the coverage. Well, the Eagles going deep on first down. Pass was right there, but good coverage. Chatter still has three timeouts. So if they need to stop the clock, they can do so. Shovel pass, and shy of the 50-yard line is John Ritson. Cody Walker on the tackle. Shattering again on the, you can see here on the shovel pass, nice execution, but good uh, defense was uh, a good play there by Walker. Third down coming up for Shadron State ball marked at the 49 yard line. Ritson lining up behind McLean in the shotgun. Stockton in motion. McLean rolling left. McLean going deep. And the pass is incomplete. Could have been intercepted. Intended for Isaac Stockton. Aaron Silverthorne, who has three interceptions already this year. Had a chance for another one, but unable to pull it down. Hey, we have we have a penalty here on uh, Mesa. We keep the drive going. Personal foul, apparently an excessive hit, roughing the quarterback, I believe. Yeah, roughing the passer. Well, that's a tough one to swallow for Mesa State. Well, it is, especially if it was a third down. You'd you'd had him stop, and uh, this keeps the drive going. Uh, Shatner's in fairly good position with three timeouts. Uh, with the ball on the 36-yard line. I know you got to protect the quarterback, but uh, got to let him play sometimes too, don't you? Yeah, that's kind of a fine line that you, that you walk there as the umpire. It's the referee that's really responsible for protecting that quarterback. The whole thing is try to, you know, protect players who are a defenseless who can't defend themselves. It didn't look like a terrible hit, or a vicious one anyway. McClain going to run, and he's going to be bumped forward and a pretty good gain on first down. Nate Dolan on the tackle, but the Eagles now getting into field goal range with time running out here in the first half. And they go with a no huddle. Yeah, Mason needs careful and hold them to a field goal attempt. They, you know, a touchdown here could, could make it very difficult for them to come back in the second half. Swings it out, incomplete. That'll stop the clock for Eagles. Second down coming up, second down and short with inside a minute left. Tyler Watson was the intended receiver, but the ball was down near his feet. Now they're showing third down, uh, third and three, looks like. So Make that third down. In. Yeah, this will be a key play here, Dan. Stand correct. Third down. I don't know, this is getting on the fringe of the range of uh, Shadron's uh, kicker. Stockton in motion. McLean going to hand it off, straight ahead give. And that's going to be close to a first down. I think he's got enough. I think it's going to be down. That was Ritson on the carry. And timeout, Shadron State, their first time out of the half. With 50 seconds left before the half. As we check, check out the all Armac academic team and Shadron State was well represented led by Joe McClain. Isn't that uh, impressive? You know, there is a correlation between you know winning on the field and winning in the classroom and I think that's something Shadron State can be very proud of.
Is Dan Carter's name up there? I, <laughs> far from it. Mesa State had four guys selected. Of course, we recognize Bobby Coy and then Trevor Wickery, who's been yeah. in the news a lot lately. Yeah, he with has that amputated pinky. All the major, major media outlets in the country even saw him on ESPN on a Saturday morning here a couple weeks ago. Well, this is, uh, this is a big play here. Uh, looks like they're going to uh, send out the offense. And uh, so it was shy of the first down. That's the first point we have to make. And one yard shot. Fourth and one. Fourth and a long one for the Eagles. Would have been a long field goal try for Travis Adder. So they decide to go for it here. McLean may try to draw him off, and it looks like they did. McLean, design roll, is going to try and get it himself, but flags are thrown, and he just runs it out of bounds. I tell you what, that is that it's a good job by that uh, senior quarterback of drawing Mesa into the neutral zone. And then the center's got to be heads up and snap the ball. That's something I believe was uh, planned by O'Boyle. And uh, they get a freebie out of it. Move the chains first down. That's why they're two-time Armac defending Armac champions, huh? And as a defensive coach, you stress your young man, ball movement, ball movement. Just ignore the cadence. Block it out of your head and get these are young men, you know, 20, 21 year old young men, and, uh, you know, they sometimes make mistakes. Heck, like you see it at the NFL level as well. Well, McLean seems to do it better than anybody does. Uh, cadence. Yeah. yeah. It reminds me kind of bull number seven for the Broncos. Elway was so good at that. So, a new set of downs here with 46 seconds remaining. McLean over the middle, dangerous pass, and it's incomplete. Down around the five-yard line, the pass intended for Tyler Watson. You, you know, so many times in games of this magnitude, it comes down to the little things. Little thing like, you know, where you got a fourth and one and a defensive lineman jumps offside and allows the opponent to keep the drive going. Pass been a little bit higher, he would have had a chance to catch it. So second down here. Four receivers set. Stockton in motion. Got a screen going over there. That's Ritson. Ritson, and the ball is loose. Wow. Ball is loose. Ground and can't let's see here. He's calling him down. Ground can't cause a fumble. I think he's going to call him down. Yeah. We're see the ball carrier. Josh Padilla on the tackle there. This is a nice job. Shatner's got the screen set up. You can see two key blocks there by the offensive lineman, and Padilla comes up and makes a touchdown saving tackle. I don't know. That ball may have been coming out if we'd had replay. That's that's you know, unfortunately we don't have that here. Yeah, he was airborne and looked like the ball came loose think, before his knee was down. I think I may have been throwing the red flag here. Let's see if there's is that ball moving before he hits the ground. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Good call by the officials. Good, Good call shot by the to play. by our crew there. You betcha. Good job by the television crew there, KSBK. Television crew. So third down coming up once again for Chadron. We have 29 seconds remaining here in the half. Eagles trying to widen the lead. Well, Chadron's got to be careful. One time out now, they, they've got to be lit. They're limited in where they can go with the football. If the ball does get caught, they could always come up with its first down, and spike the ball, and, and get another, another down or two. Got trips left. They don't get a first down here. They'll send in their, their field goal team. McLean trying to improvise here. Rolling right, throws, end zone, and it bounces in there. Incomplete. Isaac Stockton was the end of target, so fourth down, and here comes the field goal unit. Now, Mike, again, elected to rush three. He dropped eight into coverage, and... and uh, it's a good job by that uh, three-man line applying a pressure, even though even though uh, McLean was able to buy time by rolling out to his right. But good job by the secondary covering those five receivers. Travis Adder trying to give the Eagles a seven-point lead. It's going to be a 84-yard attempt. No, and I don't you've got a block. I think there was a, a hand on that ball. Yeah, I think uh, Appelhan's got a got a hand on that. He came off the edge. So Travis Adder unable to convert. Applehan's got a hand on the kick, and it's well short. 
And the Mavericks will get the ball back with 16 seconds remaining in the half. And that's got to be good news for head coach Joe Romano. Big play. And Hill will take a knee here. And that'll do it for the first half here in Grand Junction and a grand game so far as both teams have been able to put the ball into the end zone on some big plays and the second half should be a doozy. Got a lot of action for you coming up at halftime but first let's send it down to Matt Bill who is standing by with Bill O'Boyle the head coach for the Eagles. Hey guys, I am joined by head coach Bill O'Boyle. Hey, you guys got the uh, lead at halftime. Uh, what do you think the positives and negatives so far are? You know, right now I think our defense is playing well enough. We've just given up a play, and that's been what's been hurting us. Uh, besides that, a uh, uh, great kickoff return. It kind of took the wind out of them and put us back in the game. But, you know, we're, we're not hitting receivers right now. I'm a little bit disappointed in our throwing game. We've had some drops that really hurt us. And uh, we got to shore some stuff up at halftime. we got to keep the ball. What do you think that kickoff did for your guys' uh, confidence? Did you guys get an extra boost from that, I'm oh, guessing? There's no doubt. You know, uh, Mace had the momentum at that time, that long ball and the play action, and, and uh, we came out and took the ball down the field and scored. So, you know, that was huge, and then we had to stop. But we got to be able to do something with the ball offensively after that. Okay, one more thing, that blocked field goal. Does that take the wind out of the sails a little bit? You guys got to adjust. What, what was that? Right well, yeah, you know, it's big. I mean, it would put us up by a touchdown uh, going in half. So, I mean, uh, we, we flipped the tackle over, and it's uh, something we probably shouldn't have looked at. They brought the the uh, rush from that weak side and it ended up getting to us so uh, we'll make some adjustments we'll be fine okay thank you very much coach appreciate it all right guys that's it from Bill O'Boyle I'll send it back to you it seems like he's got a little bit of work that he needs to do but uh, you know what they're on five game Armac winning streak right now so uh, I'd say everything that he says in the uh, halftime speeches has been working pretty much late so I don't know if he has to change it up too much <laughs> all right Matt I agree with that coach yeah exactly if it ain't broke don't well, they, they could be scouts for Carney, you know, coming in here and trying to get the slow down on the Mavericks oh. for that key game next week up at uh, yeah. at uh, Carney. Only you, as a former head coach, <laughs> would think of that. Check out the statistics here, and, and also have uh, kind of a neat twist on things. We talked about the brothers, but first, let's check out the halftime stats. We're pretty balanced on total offense, but you can see the edge there that uh, Shattern has on the rushing side. And, and then as well as the passing yards uh, by Mace indicative of the long pass that they had. And it's a pretty balanced football game. That's why we have a four, four point half point half time score. Should be a whale of a second half if the two teams continue to play like they have on a beautiful afternoon, November 1st here in Grand Junction. Going to check out the highlights from the first half for you. A lot of big plays in that first half, Coach. And let's check them out. John Ritson was the first guy who ran it in. Yeah, I got down a, uh, into a scoring position and then was able to walk in here on this touchdown. Five touchdown run by Ritson. He's having a big day. And here's the first field goal by Jared Keating. This one of 47 yards to make it a four point game. And we can see the significance of special teams in this first half. The field goals and, and then the long kickoff return. 20-yard field goal there by Keating to make it a one-point game. And then Travis Adder with a 35-yarder. Here's the long pass play. B. Hill to Murray. Grand Giants kid. 83 yards on that touchdown pass. But it didn't stand for long. Mesa State had the lead at that point. The ensuing kickoff. This is, I think, the big play of the half, because Mesa had the momentum. But you can see the defending champions of the Armac, Evan lost in 25, answered. Maurice Threets with the kickoff return. 98 yards to give the Eagles the lead back. It's almost like they're saying, you know, we're not going to go quietly. You're going to want this championship. You're going to have to earn it. And that's where we stand at the half with Shadron up 17 to 13. And the two teams getting ready to get after it here in the second half. And uh, before we get the second half started, let's head back downstairs with Matt Bell. He's with Joe Romano, head coach for Mesa State. 
Hey, Coach, down 17-13 at the half. What'd you tell your team? Well, we just said we have to we have to play better, playing a very good football team, and you know we've got to uh, eliminate some of the things. The special teams kind of hurt us there, but uh, you know we got good good thing is we got 30 minutes left, so you know we got a lot of football ahead of us. We just got to keep our poise and, and keep coming. All right, you guys get the big touchdown, then they come right back and answer. Did that uh, take the wind out of your guys' sails a little bit? Well, that's always a, that's a big play. That's that's why the special teams are so darn important. But, you know, we know what we've got to do, and the good thing is we've got 30 minutes. We've got to be a lot more fundamentally sound. We had some, you know, some fundamental breakdowns that we can't have happen against a team like this. How about uh, rushing the ball? You feel like your offense is moving the ball pretty well, or do you guys still have a couple things that you need to fix and work on? Well, we got to adjust to things. And, you know, Coach Hour will always have a great package against you, and we've got to adjust to a couple of different uh, different looks that we're getting. But, uh, you know, they, they've got a very good defense, so we got to continue to maintain things and be, uh, be good blockers, and we're going to have to get some play-action pass going a little bit more. Okay, Coach. Thank you very much. Good luck in the second half. Thank you. All right, guys. Hey, you know what? This is a big game for Mason State. It's a virtual must win. If they don't win this game, then their shot at the playoffs is uh, is very, very tough. But if they can win this ball game, then they win, need to win next week, and then maybe they can punch their ticket as the RMAC champion. All right, Matt. Thank you. Coach, uh, if you're Joe Romano, what do you say to your team? Well, I think uh, – he said it there in that interview with with Matt. Uh, you know, he's a good coach, and I mean, you, you, you're you're down four points, uh, and and again, I don't I think it's going to come down to big plays here in the second half. Who controls the football and who avoids making any mistakes? We'll find out what happens when we come back. The start of the second half from Stoker Stadium coming right up. Well, I think one thing that Coach Romano instructed their uh, kicker, Mr. Uh, Keating, is do not kick it to feed. Uh, I'll be su I'll be surprised if they do kick it here to him. I, I would imagine they're either going to kick away from him or squib it. Threets lined up alongside Brandon Harrington. Threets had that 98-yard return in the first half to give the Eagles back the lead. And I imagine they stress the, the coverage team how important this first kickoff is going to be. Fielded at the one yard line by Harrington. And Harrington bulls his way forward to the 30 yard line. Taken down by Connor Wright. 29 yards on the return. And the Eagles set up on offense at their own 30 yard line. Now you always got to hold your breath if you've been uh, burned by a long one like that. Pretty good job of coverage there by the uh, Mavericks. Especially Connor Wright coming in out of Wheat Ridge. Evan Pilking teamed up behind Joe McClain under center. Pilkington gets the straight ahead give and he is tackled for a loss. Pilkington, who had a pretty good first half and a great game last week against Mines, is taken down. It's a good job at the point of attack by the Mason Maverick defensive line. He just dominated that front and uh, for no gain. Slight loss in the play. Called a second down and a long 10. Four receivers in the formation. And the draw to Pilkington. And a short gain leaving the Eagles with third down and long here. There again, once again, uh, good good defensive play by the by the Mavericks. Spencer McAdoo, the outside linebacker out of Broomfield, Colorado, a junior on that tackle. Third down and eight. And Stockton in motion. McLean rolling left. Throws and the pass is incomplete. Not quite sure he was his target on that pass. Joel Schomer was back there. Well, once again, they uh, elected to roll McLean away from the pressure, although. Uh, Mesa rush three. Uh, Rodriguez did a nice job of keeping McLean inside. Shatters rushed their punt team on the field here to try to catch Mesa off guard. Mesa lined up like they're coming up with an all-out block. Kevin Berg, the punter, gets it away. 
And fielded at the 30-yard line by Chernoff, and he is upended close to the 40-yard line. Griffin Chernoff on the return, a nine-yard return. And the Mavericks have the ball for the first time here in the second half. Now, you see Maury Streets there on the tackle. Kids all over the field today. Good football player. He's going to be around the Armac for a while. He's only a freshman. You see Coach Romano making his point very assertively on the sidelines here. V Hill, straight ahead give on first down to Bobby Coy. It's always curious to see the uh, adjustments that coaches make at halftime if they if they do make any. And uh, it's that old chess game that that. Uh, Evolves over the course of a football game. Bobby Coy, 45 yards in the first half compared to John Ritson's 70 yards, but Ritson had a 40 yard, 48 yard run in the first half for Shadron. Coy with a pitch, and he is all the way up to midfield. Good run there, and a first down for the Mavericks, taken down by Aaron Ide. Well, it appears to me, Dan, you know the old saying, you dance with who brung you, and, and Bobby Coy and the offensive line have got Mason to this point of their season, and at halftime, I think they just reaffirmed that we're going to run Coy, offensive line, get get your blocks, and let's uh, play Mason Maverick football. So it's kind of like a challenge to the defensive front of, of the Eagles. Two back set. Good old hard smash mouth football here. Zach Bolani in a the fullback position, fake the give. V Hill throwing, pass is caught. Inside the 35 yard line by Justin Murray having a huge day. Well, see, and when you establish the running game, then it opens up the play pass because in this case here, the fake to Coy now the, draws the linebackers up and you get a one on one with Murray on the outside on the on the secondary. And uh, V Hill does a nice job. And this is an outstanding catch here by Murray. Pretty good Murray. protection, too, yeah. for V. Hill on that play. Justin Murray's really rising to the occasion, having a big day here for the Mavericks. He's in motion. There's the draw to Coy. And Coy surging forward for a pretty good gain. Shane O'Dell, defensive end out of Camp Crook, South Dakota. Credit for the tackle. Joined there by Austin Bailey as well. Bailey, Bailey does a good job. You know, notice even on that play there, Coy's going to get some positive yards even after he's hit. And a tough kid. Gain of five. Maybe six on the play. Second down and four. Straight ahead give to Coy. And he's down at the 25-yard line, about a yard and a half short of the first down. And a good drive here for the Mavericks. Bobby Coy, heavy dose of him so far to begin the second half. Third down and short for Phil Vigil and company. Vigil a senior out of Arvada, Colorado. There's a blitz and Vigil's going down. A corner blitz. Craig Kaiser, the safety coming hard and he sacks V Hill. That's Loss a nice seven on the play. Nice call there by Todd Auer. They brought the safety off the corner and the left tackle uh, just wasn't ready for that speed. Wasn't even leaving to get set up before he was by the edge there. And, and uh, Mace is lucky that that didn't turn into a uh, fumble on the part of V Hill. Well, Jerry Keating who has had a long one today already is trying for another one here. Ball marked at the 39, a 49-yard attempt by Jared Keating. And Keating kicks it through. Tight one here in Grand Junction. Eagles with the lead. A long field goal by Jared Keating of 49 yards, making it a one-point game. And this kick is going to be down in the end zone for a touchback by the Eagles. Let's head downstairs with Matt Bill. Matt. Hey guys, you know, you guys did a story on the V Hill sibling rivalry at halftime. Well, I have another sibling rivalry for you today. 
Chris Dennehy is a senior offensive lineman at Mesa State. His little brother is a sophomore at Shadron State. He's a backup offensive lineman, Shane Dennehy. The Dennehys have 26 family members today in the stands. These boys are the two youngest of seven siblings. And just if you guys were wondering who they're rooting for, they have gray shirts on. On one side, it has a Maverick. On the other side, it has an Eagle. And they are just he saying goes. that they're rearing for both teams. Back to you guys. And here's John Retson. Retson taken down from behind at the 20-yard line. A touchdown saving tackle there made by Brandon Waymeyer. 60-yard pickup by John Ritson. Simple sweep there in the uh, point of attack. Yeah, the Shattern Eagles do a great job of uh, of uh, you know, creating a seam for Ritson to attack, and he does a good job of getting north and south. Tremendous effort by Brandon Waymeyer, the senior safety out of Parker, Colorado, saving a touchdown. It's almost every time, uh, like every time Mesa throws a punch, Shattern comes back and counter punches. Ball marked at the 22-yard line, trips left. Ritson gets the pitch left, and no game there, flags are thrown. Ryan Cadavy, the linebacker, gets credit for the tackle. I got a flag here. I think it's going to be on Shadron here. Yep. Holding. So that'll, that'll be a big break for Mesa. What a day for John Ritson. 60 yards on that last scamper, the one before this last run. Yeah. He had 70 yards of the half. Well, another local kid, Shadron High School, playing for the home uh, home team there. His dad was an All-American wrestler at Adams State. And uh, it comes from a very athletic family. His mom, Donna, was a, was a track star at Adams State as well. So there's some good genetics. Only 5'8", 185 pounds, but Ritson putting every bit of that 5'8 frame into his game, and now it's going to be a false start against Shadron here. Yeah, they, the running back's in the mold of the, the Danny Woodhead mold. You, know, you, you don't have to be 6'2", uh, 225 to be a good running back, particularly a Division two. Joel Schomer called on the false start. And now the Eagles with the big chunk of yardage to pick up here for the first down. The ball moved all the way back to the 37-yard line of Mesa State. Joel McLean barking out the signals. Shovel pass. Ritson eludes a couple of guys and pretty good gain on that play. Some action going on back around midfield as we take another look at the shovel pass. A little altercation between the Eagles and Chance, the Mavericks. Chance Gailey lead, leading up there on that shovel pass. Did a nice job, uh, job of, of uh, blocking at the point of attack. Ritson catching a few on the sidelines. They have been banged up just a little bit. But you know what? When they, they've got plenty of depth at the running back position, Wilkington and Cooksley. Cooksley is actually out with an injury. Pilkington in there now. He gets the shovel pass. Boy, they like that play. And Pilkington has some daylight. He is inside the 20-yard line before he's wrestled down. And it makes it a third and manageable now for Shadron. Well, that's an that's a excellent play against that three-man rush. They're able to seal the defensive end outside, run, run up inside of him, and, uh, and wall off the nose guard. So this is something that uh, the uh, uh, Shattern Eagle offensive coordinators noticed uh, at halftime. Pilkington, a redshirt freshman, showing some promise. The running back position for Shattern. Big play here, third, third and five. Rolling left, McLean going for the end zone, touchdown! Isaac Stockton, wide open. And the Eagles widen the gap. 18 yards on the connection. McLean to Stockton. 
Yeah, nice job here, uh, McLean. They roll the pocket here, get him away from the pressure. He sets his feet and catches uh, Stockton over the over the middle on that seam. Long coverage down. there, Coach. Yes, it was. Yeah, you can see the defensive backs for uh, uh, Mesa didn't get that, didn't, didn't, didn't execute that very well. Travis Adder on for the extra point try. This Eagles team tough to defense, and Adder kicks it through. 24 to 16 as Isaac Stockton continues his big day with a touchdown catch here in the third. Eight point lead for the Eagles. Isaac Stockton with a 17 yard touchdown catch from Joe McLean. Four plays, 80 yards, taking up just two minutes and 46 seconds. I tell you what, Isaac Stockton may be the most athletic team. Uh, uh, player on this field right now. Tremendously talented young man, 6'3", 227, receiver, great speed. Only a junior. Kick taken at the 10-yard line. This is Applehans. Applehans spins forward to the 26. 16 yards on the return. Maurice Threets in on the stop once again, coach. Good athlete. He's definitely making an impact on special teams. And that speaks well of that young man. Sometimes your return specialist, you know, have the attitude, well, I don't need to be in there making tackles. I'm, I, all I want to do is run the football. And how about Shadron State? I mean, they were facing a first and 25, and no problem. They just take it right into the end zone. This is an important drive for Mason. Mason needs an answer here with some type of drive. Coy with the handoff and gains a couple on first down up near the 30-yard line. Tough yardage for Bobby Coy. Aaron Bauer in on the stop. Linebacker at a Shadron High School. Trans have got their, their four-man defensive front in here playing more of a 4-3 now. V Hill with time and he connects. Out over the 40-yard line and pushed out of bounds is the tight end, Maurice Manley. First down for the Mavericks. I know we featured the V Hill brothers at halftime. I, this is an outstanding play by, by the quarterback for Mesa. It shows a lot of poise. Uh, he steps up into the pocket, and I mean, he puts that ball on a rope. And an outstanding catch. Good execution. Manley, a big target, 6'5", 240 pounds. And at a Grand Junction Central. Coy, tough sledding here, gains a yard, maybe. He is a tough young man, Coy, just 5'9", 190 pounds out of Littleton, Colorado, Heritage High School. Coy, third in the nation in rushing, entering the game today and set a new Mesa State single season rushing record with 1,400 yards entering the game today. Well, I'll tell you what, he, Michael Vaughn, the young man who has the record, uh, he, he was an outstanding player back under Bob Cortese, and Bob Cortese had those great teams here at Mesa. Play action, pass is caught by Manley, the tight end. Manley up near midfield. Austin Bailey, the linebacker out of Red Wing in Minnesota, and on the stop. Third down coming up for Mesa. Manley, another guy that the NFL scouts are looking at. All right, got great size, 6'4", 240, runs well, gets the ball well. Indeed. Big third down play here. Ball at the 48-yard line. The pitch to Coy. Sweeping left, cuts it inside and has a first down. Flags are thrown. Bobby Coy with a good run there, but we'll check the flag. So it looks like uh, they're pointing at uh, Mesa. Hold. Pat Kane, our referee again today. 
Microphone not working, but Matt Bill is, and Matt Bill is downstairs. Matt. Hey, guys, you guys were just talking about Bobby Coy and how he's known here for uh, his rushing yards that he's had in school history. But what he might be known for worldwide is the fact that his sister was on that, you guys remember that Fox show, My Big Fat Obnoxious Fiance, a couple years back? Bobby Coy's sister was actually that girl. She was the one who was trying to trick her family into uh, talking, you know, saying, hey, I married this guy. Basically, short end of the story, she got $500,000. Everybody in her family got $100,000, including Bobby. Bobby says that his teammates don't really make fun of him too much. They don't have any nicknames for him, but they do make fun of him for crying on the episode. They say that he actually cried a little bit, and uh, so they give him a little bit of grief. But you know what? Bobby was a senior in high school at that time, and I guess he just didn't want his sister to be marrying a, a big, fat actor. So uh, back up to you guys, but a uh, pretty interesting story down here. Hard to top that one. Here's the punting unit on the field for Mesa. And just getting the kick away is C.J. Smith. They let it bounce, and it's going to take a Mesa State roll inside the 20 down to the 15-yard line. I didn't, I didn't catch that episode, did you? Uh, you know what? I that wasn't on my list uh, to watch every week. <laughs> The big, fat fiance. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's unfortunate that Mesa had that penalty on that uh, third down play. They ended up with a very third and 15 and didn't convert and had to, had to punt the ball away. Now the Eagles have the ball, and they have an eight-point lead here in the third. Shadron with an eight-point lead, and they have the ball at their own 15-yard line. Here come the Mavericks on a blitz. The pitch and cutting it upfield for a short game. Treats is Maurice Treats, your favorite player. Yeah, kids showing a lot of versatility. So Cookley's injured. And they, you know what? I don't know if they just want to rest uh, Ritson and Pilkington. But I tell you what, the kid's got his hands on the ball. He's a threat to take the distance. As we saw in the first half with his 98-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Looks like McClain, McClain's going to change the play at the line of scrimmage. Hands it, or gives it to Threets, who runs straight up the middle for another short gain. That was Ryan Cadaby, the linebacker who leads Mesa State in tackles with another stop. Cadaby out of Greeley, Colorado. Now this offense that Coach Wolf Boyle runs, you just plug in a new tailback. You just keep, keep running the same offense. Trips left. Reeds in the backfield alongside Joe McClain on third down and four. McClain heaves it and it's picked off by Ryan Cadavy. That's only the fourth interception this year by Joe McClain. And what a break for the Mavericks. Now that's certainly not characteristics of a senior quarterback. I don't know what, ha what happened on that read, but uh, McClain just, you know, misread it. And uh, Cadavy did a nice job. That's a huge play. That's our first turnover of the game, Dan, by either team. Cadavy's first interception of the year. And now Mesa State lining up at the Shadron 24 yard line here. The give is to Coy. Coy cuts it upfield, and he's inside the 20 down at the 19 yard line with 2.27 remaining in the third. Mavericks trying to convert this turnover into points. It's simply that outside zone stretch play, and uh, Coy does a nice job of, of uh, stretching the defense and cutting back against the grain for positive yardage. A pass by McClain looked like a wounded duck into the hands yeah. of Ryan Cadavy, the linebacker for Mesa State. Coy again. And this time he's got another good chunk of yardage. Appears to have the first down at around the 12-yard line, and he does. 
Shadden is trying to make a big play defensively here, and I think they stunted themselves out of the play here. And uh, Mesa does a nice job of picking up the stun and getting positive yards for Coy. Ball is marked at the just outside the 12 yard line. So first and 10. Split the backs behind V Hill. V Hill with a screen, and the pass is intercepted. Intercepted by the Eagles. Pass was in and out of the hands. Chris Means. Of Chris Means. Yeah, that's unfortunate. The young man was trying to make a big play. He batted it twice. Here you can see on the replay. Could have caught it there, tipped it there, tipped it there. And uh, the young man from uh, Shadron State hustling back to the football. Shane and Odell. Odell. I tell you what, he's a, he's a big man to bring down. 6'4", 255 pounds, his second interception of the year. A big turnover there, so a couple of turnovers here in the third quarter. Yeah, we go back and we go the entire game without a turnover and back to back uh, interceptions. So the Eagles have the ball inside the 20 yard line and they hand it off straight up the middle for a short game. Now that's uh, really tough to swallow for Mesa State. They got the turnover. Evan Pilkington on the carry on that first down play for the Eagles. But would have liked to have gotten at least three points out of that turnover, and they end up with nothing. Yeah, that was significant. I, those are two two plays that will definitely uh, you know, will play a big role in the uh, outcome of this game. Second down and a long five. Here's the pitch to Pilkington. Very little there. And the Eagles will be facing a third down with time running out here in the third quarter. Nice job by Ravin Kadebi uh, there, the point of attack. Senior linebacker, you know, seniors tend to step up, make big plays, huge play on his on the part of that young man. Third down and six for the Eagles at their own 23. Big play here for the Mesa State defense. Shovel pass, and that's going to be well short of the first down. I believe that was Pilkington. It's going to be the end of the quarter. And a big stop by Bennett Newton, the inside linebacker out of Castle Rock, Colorado. And that will take us to the end of the third quarter. A good one going here in Grand Junction. Eagles with the lead and the ball when we come back. Fourth quarter getting underway here in Grand Junction. And the punting unit onto the field. Kevin Berg back to kick for the Eagles standing at his own 10-yard line. And standing at his own 35-yard line is Griffin Chernoff. And he takes it at the 35 and he's dumped immediately. Good play on the coverage there. And Oh, Maurice Threets again. Yeah, he's definitely a special team player of the game so far. It'll be hard to top him at this point. Of course, Keating's not doing too bad. They'd like to have uh, to get Keating in position right now. Keating, field yeah, goal. he has a 49-yarder and a 47-yard field goal on the day. And a 20-yarder as well. The Shatter, ball at Shatter. the 35-yard line. Shatter showing blitz, and they are bringing him. Tough running there by Bobby Coy. Coy, before that carry, with 79 yards on the day. His counterpart, John Ritson, with 128. Yeah, he's definitely below his average, 155 a, a game. We still got a quarter to play, though. This is that one long run to get that average back up there. There's Coach Romano and Coach from Mesa State on the sidelines trying to figure out what's the best play to call here. V Hill steps up, going deep, and the pass is overthrown. 
Justin Murray, who had a long one in the first half, is a little bit out of his reach, and Hill upset that he didn't hit him. Thomas. Yeah, you know, Hill gets, gets hit as he releases here. And just, just uh, beyond the reach of Murray. Aaron Bauer with the pressure and Thomas Ewell on the coverage. The third and eight to be important for the Mavs to convert here. V Hill throws it, passes dropped by Griffin Chernoff. And Mesa State will have to punt it away. Well, it's unfortunate the young man dropped that football that uh, wasn't, you would need to make a, a, you know, get about five more yards in order to make the first down. I'm not sure he would have got it. But uh, it may have been why he uh, dropped the ball. He may have been looking up. C.J. Smith gets the kick away. Taken at the 30-yard line. And up the sidelines and bumped out of bounds over midfield is Brandon Harrington. Good return, flags are thrown. Greets has another excellent block on this return. Harrington, 22 yards on the return, but I believe it's coming back. There's a good block there. <laughs> Holding the call, that'll push the Eagles back, and let's head down to Matt Bill. Matt? Hey guys, Trevor Wickery, uh, like you guys have been talking about for uh, the whole game. Basically, last month he decided to amputate at the second knuckle of his right pinky. Now, the reason why he decided to have it amputated was because in 20 years, the likelihood of him having to get it amputated was very high because of severe arthritis and everything like that. Well, I talked to Trevor yesterday. He said that it's not affecting him with his blocking. He says that he can still grab on and hold on with four of his fingers. He has like a bandage on his right finger, but he says the stitches are out and everything's fine. The teammates like to joke with him. They call him Fantastic Four, and they also say he's 10% less likely to be called for holding. So, hey, he's got that going for him, too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Matt, thanks. I like that. <laughs> Fantastic Four, huh? A, a tenth less likely to be called for holding. I didn't think offensive lineman hell. Of course not. Evan Pilkington on that carry. First down for the Eagles, a short gain. Second down and seven at their own 39-yard line. He shatters in a bunch, trips set there on the left side. Straight up the middle, Pilkington is taken down immediately. He runs into a brick wall. No gain on the play. Dominic Applehans leading the surge defensively for Mesa State. You got that right, leading the surge. Yeah. Was a good job by the defensive front there, holding them to no gain. Offensive line for Shadron is seventh in the nation in sacks allowed. They've only allowed about one sack a game, a little bit less. This pass is going to be caught. And close to a first down, Brandon Harrington with the catch out over the 45 to the 46-yard line. Nice execution here by McLean. He, you don't see it at the start of the replay. He fakes to the right and then rolls back to his left, catches Harrington wide open. Good execution by, by the Eagles. And just enough for the first down, a seven-yard gain. Ball just over the 45-yard line. Approaching the 12 minute mark in the game. This is Pilkington, and he's taken down for no gain. Tony Kelly, the nose tackle, with a tackle out of Montrose High School. Tony Kelly, 6'3, 270 pound sophomore. Several Western Slope uh, student-athletes here for the Mavericks. 
Two of the area high schools are on the other side of the mound today. Grand Central Central's playing in the playoffs. I believe they're playing Chaparral. Buda Miamid High School's in the playoff game with Columbine, Columbine High School today. Second down and a long 10. There's a hard cadence. Play action. Rolling left, McLean has time, buying time now. Heaves it up there, man wide open. That's Pilkington, and Pilkington taking it to the 15, inside the 10, and down at the six or seven yard line. Brandon Birdstall finally made the tackle, but Pilkington was wide open. Great players make great plays, and that was all McLean. You can see he started to his left, stopped, rolled back to his right. That puts an awful lot of pressure on a defense to stay, have those receivers covered that long. They mark it at the seven yard line, first and goal for the Eagles. Here's a surprise coach. Mines is leading 27 to 20 over Clarney in the fourth. That'd be a big win for Mines if they can pull that out. First and goal for the Eagles. McClain going to be whoop, almost taken down, and now he is. Back of the 19-yard line by Derek Thorne, outside linebacker out of Grand Junction. You know, Coach O'Boyle's opened up his playbook here. This is about the fourth time it he's ran this where, where McClain will uh, fake going to uh, one direction then roll back against the grain, and, and he's having some success, except on this play. Uh, good, good defense there by, by uh, Mesa State. So second and goal from the 19. I think they're trying to take advantage of the uh, pursuit. You know, Mason uh, is pursuing very aggressively to the football, and that they'll slow down that pursuit off that sim when they roll that pocket with McLean. One back set. That's Stockton in motion. You see, they Ray run it again. And McLean's going to keep it and push out of bounds. And there go yeah. the flags. Dominique Applehans, maybe a little bit too aggressive on that shove, and this is going to go against Mesa State. Well, the key is, did he shove him while he was in, was in the field of play, or was he beyond the line? Joe Romano not at all pleased over that call, and you, who can blame him? I don't know if that was appropriate or not. Take another look. He kind of pulled up there. Yeah. Applehans. Once he knew that McLean was out of bounds, but well, if you're from Shatter and you're saying good call, if you're from Mesa State, you're saying BS. At least that's what I read <laughs> Coach Romano's <laughs> lips to say. Bill O'Boyle kind of liked it. And that's an automatic first down. First down and goal from the nine. Just inside the nine yard line. And now they've gone to a double tight end. Two back set. Here's the pitch, sweeping left. That's Mark Haig, who we haven't called too much today. Haig, the junior out of Indianola, Nebraska. So second down and goal coming up the ball. And there's another flag, and this is going to go against Shadron State. Well, that'll definitely help Mesa State, although we've seen uh, in the previous drive where they were first and 25 and were able to keep the drive alive and score a touchdown. So another first down and goal outside the 10 yard line. The ball is marked at the 17 for the Eagles. Just another challenge for this Shadron State offense. Mason needs to hold them to a field goal attempt. Otherwise, time will be a little factor if they were able to get across for a touchdown. Shovel pass. This is Pilkington. Cuts it upfield. Pilkington, and there's a flag, is finally taken down at the two-yard line. Sean Matheson with the tackle. And referee Pat Keen will tell us what happened. 16 yards on the pickup. Another hold. So things getting rather sloppy here. 
That was the first time I, I've seen the, uh, looks like the Mason Maverick defense may be getting worn down a little bit. They've been on the field a long time. Remember, going into the game, Coach O'Boyle's, one of his uh, keys to the game was controlling the football. And uh, looks like they may be wearing down the Mesa defense here a little bit. Mason needs to get the ball and, and drive and, and allow their defense to, to rest. So another first down and goal. This one outside the 20 at the 22-yard line. First to goal at the 22. Uh, we saw a kickoff last weekend from the other team's 25-yard line. So we'll see if this doesn't get kind of crazy. Mesa's up. will probably, they're going to rush four here. Pass is low. For Isaac Stockton, he's unable to take it off the turf before it bounces. Yeah, Isaac saying, uh, got to get the pass up a little bit for me. Isaac out of Mitchell High School in Colorado Springs. And he has Spencer McAdoo breathing down his neck. Second down and goal from the 22-yard line. See what Joe McClain can come up with here. He's going to run it. McClain runs into his own man inside the 20 and down at the 18, maybe the 17-yard line. And this is within field goal range already for Travis Adder and already down by eight points. Mesa State can ill afford to fall behind by any more. Third down. That was a planned, uh, planned scramble, you'd call it, by, by uh, Chatter. Third down and goal. We have a an eagle down on the field. Eight minutes left in this game. And a big third down and goal for Shadron State at the 17-yard line. Pass is going to be knocked down. Heads up play by Mark Haig. The tailback intentionally knocking that pass down so it wouldn't be picked off and giving the Eagles a chance at a field goal. Yeah, it was a good play here. By the Kadabi there. Yeah. So Travis Adder is on to attempt a 35-yard field goal with McLean holding. And this would give the Eagles an 11-point yeah. lead. It'll make it a two-possession game if, if they can get this. As it stands right now, still a one-possession game. Adder gets plenty of foot on that ball, and he kicks it through. A 35-yard field goal for Travis Adder. 7.51 remaining in this one. So Travis Adder with his second 35-yard field goal of the day gives Shadron an 11-point lead with inside eight minutes left. It looks like uh, Bobby Coy and Joey Applehans are back deep to receive the kick. For the Mavericks, and they give it to Coy. Coy's going to throw it back, a lateral, to Applehans, and that play didn't work at all. Applehans is down to the 15-yard line. It's a little trickery there, and it backfires on Mesa State. Well, no, no use to trying to save anything. Uh, Coach uh, Romano's pulling out all the stops, trying to throw, run a throwback here uh, between McCoy and... and Coverage team for uh, Shatter did a nice job. So we have 85 yards to go in a two possession game. Murray in motion. This is Coy. And he'll take it out over the 20 yard line. Taken down by Austin Bailey. And here come the flags. Well, we got a flag and a hat. I guess when you. 
throw your flag, you don't have anything else to throw, you throw your hat. So, and I don't want to know what comes after the hat. <laughs> <laughs> Hope we never have to find out. <laughs> no, exactly. Pat Keen will pull us in on what happened after the play. Dead ball. On Mesa. And Chatter. An offset and play it, play it over. So in other words, boys will be boys. Yes. Nothing there. Yeah. Obviously, out of the camera shot, whatever happened on the off-sending penalties. So, replay second down. V Hill gets it away, and the pass is Look caught. Out. Look out. Sideline catch. One man to beat, and that's Murray. Flags are thrown. Murray is taken down outside the 35-yard line. Okay, now, we got a flag thrown all the way over here on this sideline. 53 yards on the connection from V Hill to Murray. Those two guys have really done a number today. Murray had an 83-yard touchdown catch in the first half. Walk in the back. On Masick's going to come back. Okay. Still going to be enough for first down, so spot foul. Pushing back 15 yards. Or is it a 10-yarder? It's 10 from the spot. So first down. You know, Murray's having a great day. Great game for the Mavericks. Ball now at the 44-yard line. Saturn showing blitz. V Hill going to keep it rolling left. All right, carrying that ball dangerously, and he's down at the 45 yard line. Yeah, they were running a drive, a dive option here, and the play was discombobulated after V Hill come off the, the fullback fake here. And all he could do to get back to the line of scrimmage. Looks like Jared Kester had a chance to strip that ball from behind, but they settle for the one-yard gain. And Shatter on the blitz again. This is Noble. Noble close to a first down. And the clock becoming a factor now. Duke Hurdley with a tackle linebacker out of Mountain View, Wyoming. You see Veal throwing to Noble. Noble, nice hands. Here's upfield. Just short of the first. We like to say we've identified the enemy, and the enemy is us. Well, right now, the enemy is the clock. Yes, it state. is. Coy with a big gain nice here. Cut. Coy driving forward and near the 30-yard line, down at the 31-yard line of Shadron. Finally taken down by Trevor High at the safety. Great uh, job of starting and stopping there. You see the quickness in Coy. Plant the outside foot, get up field. Quickness and the toughness linebacker, of Bobby Coy. Linebacker for Shad and thought he had him dead to rights. Vigil wants to throw over the middle, has a man! And it's dropped by Justin Murray. Murray had six if he hangs on, but unable to pull it down. Yeah, it's unfortunate that young man's had a great game. And uh, just, you know, Vigil does a nice job staying in the pocket. And just didn't, didn't pull it in. Nine times out of ten, that young man will make that catch. Justin Murray, 5'10", 190-pound junior at a Grand Junction. Bobby Coy with over 100 yards on the day. He gets the ball. Another good move by Coy, and he's taken down at the 22-yard line. Shy of the first down. 
Trevor Hyatt again in on the stop. The uh, Hyatt kids around the football. Good football player. We got another eagle down in the field earlier. As we take a look at Coy again on the run, it was Ben Puffer, the left tackle, who got up slowly. And now another eagle is down, and that's Craig Kaiser, the safety. Third down and two for Mesa State at the Shadron 23-yard line. Down by 11 points. Stacked eye behind V Hill. Gives to the fullback Means, and he's going to spin forward for a first down. Obviously, Mesa has to come away with some points here since it's a two possession game, whether it be a field goal or a touchdown. First and 10, ball just outside the 20 yard line. Noble wide right, got Murray left. Offset eye behind V Hill. And now he's going to call for time. Have an injury update. Let's head down to Matt Bill. Hey, guys, the, the gentleman that just walked off the floor, I just ran over across the field uh, trying to catch my breath right now, but it doesn't matter about me. Anyways, uh, just a stinger. He's going to be fine. And uh, also the uh, offensive lineman, Richard Smock, who was hurt in the last possession, he also has a stinger, and he's uh, back out on the field as well. So uh, two injuries that were averted and, uh, you know, just stuff that comes with football. You know about that, right, Coach? You got it, yeah. Hey, uh, find the oxygen tank there, Matt, will you? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but it's good, uh, it's good to know that it's nothing serious, that they're, they're just stingers, which is you another know, term for a pinch nerve. I used to have one of those uh, myself years ago. Uh, getting back to the game here, we, uh, you know, Mesa had to burn a timeout because they didn't have the right uh, formation, and, and that, that could come back to haunt them. They're going to need all the timeouts they can, they can, uh, they can, they can make, that they can need here as we get uh, toward the waning minutes, especially if they're able to get a, uh, some points out of this drive. So kind of a wasted uh, time out there. Yeah, that could come back to bite them. First and 10 at the, just outside the 20 yard line. Here's the pitch to Coy, cuts it upfield. Coy inside the 15 and down at the 14 yard line. He seems to get better as the game goes on. Yes, uh, he's... A lot of stamina in that young man. Mavericks need to punch it in here. Murray in motion. Fake the give. And, oh, what a hit. V Hill is hammered down by... Aaron Eide, or was that Shane O'Dell? I think it was Shane O'Dell. Yep, Shane O'Dell, the 6'4 senior out of Camp Crook, South Dakota, who just levels Phil Vigil. That was a coverage sack. Phil Vigil had nowhere to go with the football. Probably should have gotten rid of the football and, and uh, rather than taking the sack. Now they're third and ten. And down he goes again. At the 30-yard line, boy, the Eagles offense really stepping up, and this time it is Aaron Ide who gets credit for the sack. Again, uh, Todd Auer, defense coordinator for Shatter, does a great does a great job of changing up the fronts, sending a multitude of different blitzes and looks. It makes it awful difficult for an offensive lineman to protect the quarterback. They, need, they needed a field goal anyway. They need a field goal and a touchdown, so Keating can nail this one here. 45-yard attempt. Keating already with two long ones today, and he has, nope, that one just to the left. Thought he was able to keep it inside the left upright, but not the case. And for the first time today, Jerry Keating is unsuccessful. Keating's had a huge day. 45 and a, we'll make it a, a 47 and a 49 yard field goal for Keating. Now this one off the mark and the Eagles take over on offense. 
2.41 remaining, and not looking good for no, it isn't. Mesa State. You know, and, and you know, Chattern's, uh, all they got to do is get a couple first downs, and they're going to be able to run out this clock and stay undefeated in the conference, extend their conference win streak to 26 games. And they'll hand it off to Mark Haig. Okay, Mace is going to call a timeout, it looks like here. And they have one remaining. Well, we had a great season here for the RMAC game of the week. Had some fun weekends. I'd like to thank our crew, production crew, that have done such a great job over the six games that we've been able to carry out of Pueblo Community College and a spotter today. And Joe, you got to pronounce your last name for me. Smith Bauer, baseball player here at Mesa State. A good one, a third baseman. He's been our spotter today. We thank Joe. And uh, John Eddy, our statistician all year, has done a great job. Well, barring a, a miraculous finish here, it looks like Shatter will catch Western State at home. They, they clinch at least a tie for the conference title today, no matter what happens against Western State next week. And more importantly, they're going to end up, uh, the, should they beat Western, they're going to host a first-round playoff game, and playoffs will start on November 15th. This loss is really going to be tough for, uh, for Mesa if Mesa isn't able to come back and, and win here. Shadron coming in today, ranked 13th nationally in Division II. Boy, Mark Haig getting some playing time here with another handoff here, and Haig surging forward close to the first down. Stays in bounds. And 2.17 remaining here in Grand Junction. Now, of course, Mace is still going to have a lot to play for. They can go to Kearney, depending on what the outcome of that Mines Kearney game was today. You know, they go to Kearney win, they can still have an outside chance of getting into that uh, rotary, uh, uh, Dixie Rotary Bowl there in St. George, Utah. It wasn't the prettiest of games today for Shadron, but they just find a way to get it done. Uh, you can see the champion coming out in them. You know, they uh, they fumbled that snap right there. Uh, looks like they got on it. Trying to run a quarterback sneak, and then they didn't didn't get the job done. Even had Mesa recovered, still a long shot, down by 11. Yeah, well, now it's going to be fourth down, and, and Mesa's defense held. I look, and they call timeout here as well. They uh, burned their last timeout. Mesa, I look for them on this uh, punt uh, to come after it. Uh, they do a great job with their special teams. We, we had them where they blocked an extra uh, field goal attempt earlier today. So I look for uh, the coaches uh, for Mesa. Got some time here. Matt, Bill, what do you have for us? Hey, guys, you know this game means a whole lot to the Mesa State Mavericks when the offense comes off the field and no one sits down. The offensive linemen were standing up. The quarterback, the running backs, I mean, every single person was standing up, watching the defense, making sure that uh, they got to stop and hoping they got another chance. And it looks like right now on fourth and two, they might just get that chance, but uh, I think they're going to need a miracle, guys. Well, we've seen miracles happen. Don't think it's not over until the fat lady sings, right, Dan? Or until Coach Geyser sings. Is that a segue <laughs> from that uh, piece that Matt had earlier on the big fat fiance? <laughs> There's a fair catch called for by Griffin Chernoff at the 25-yard line. Right, you're down by uh, 11. No timeouts. You're going against one of the best defenses in the uh, Armac, if not the country. Who gets the game ball today, Coach? Well, I would say, uh, you know, I kind of like Beatty. i tell you what, that kid, uh, you know, more streets, streets uh, just had an outstanding game. I mean, that kickoff return was huge. Obviously, Joe McLean had a big game. And I think you give one to the offensive line for the for Shadron State. And Shane O'Dell had a big interception defensively. Manley nearly makes a spectacular catch, but unable to come down with it. Second down coming up for Mesa State. 
Chadron just uh, rushed three there, dropped eight into coverage. Well, you can see where this Maurice Manley would be a, a prospect for the NFL. He's got a lot of tools and a big frame. All-time series belongs to Shadron. They're on their way to winning for a 13th time in 18 tries against Mesa State. V. Hill buying time, and he's going to go down from behind. Good tackle there. Jay Maduna out of North Platte, Nebraska. I think the thing that impresses me, Dan, about Shadron is they play like a champion. You know, they, they got down. They didn't panic. And pass is incomplete, intended for Bobby Coy. It's almost like every time Mesa made a big play, Shadron answered. And, and uh, that just goes back to they, they have that, they expect to win. And again, I think uh, the momentum shifted entirely on the kickoff return by Morris Threets after Mesa State had taken the lead on a big play. Very next kickoff. Eagles take it all the way back, 98 yards. That was a huge play, and then the interception. Yeah, they couldn't answer. Yeah, after they got the interception yep. there in the third quarter, that was huge. Fourth down here. Vigil gets it away, and the pass is caught. That's Noble for a first down at the 42-yard line. No timeouts remaining for Mesa State. The clock stops on a first down. So they'll probably uh, either run a play or spike the ball here. That's not going to bode well. No. Another sack. No. You don't want that. Now the Shadron defense ranked fourth nationally in rush defense and they're third nationally in sacks per game with four. They had nine last week. Adding to their total today, and there's another sack. And they're pinning back their ears and coming after Phil Vigil. I think we can safely say turn out the lights. The party's over. It's uh, been a good game. Both teams played hard. They've represented the Rockman Athletic Conference well. Austin Bailey on that last sack. Vigil over the middle for Noble. Incomplete. That'll stop the clock with seven seconds remaining. Well, Mesa's had a had a great season to this point. You know, they still got a tough one up there at Kearney. They got to go on the road, and uh, if they, they can win there. They can still salvage a, a possible uh, postseason bowl berth. It's unlikely they'll get into the playoffs. Well, Mesa State came in tied for second place with Kearney today. Kearney was losing at last glance. Yeah, we had the top four teams in the conference playing at each other today. Mines and Kearney, and this game here. Flags. Passes incomplete on fourth down. And if it's nothing on the left on the clock here, so yeah. this isn't against the Eagles, and the game is over. And it's not, and it is. So congratulations to... Shadron State, another win today. And is there any time on the clock? Nope. It's one tenth up there, looks like. Yeah, are they going to recognize that or not? Teams are coming back onto the field to run another play, it looks like. So they will have to snap the ball here to make it official. One tenth of a second left. Bill Boyle screaming at his team to get off the field and get on the field for the guys that belong on the offensive side. He's still screaming? Dang. <laughs> <laughs> Told you. What does it take to please this guy? <laughs> That's it. Officially, Joe McLean takes the knee, and Joe Romano, head coach for Mesa State, will shake hands with Bill O'Boyle, whose team remains undefeated in conference. 26th straight conference victory for Shadron. Well, they're definitely the, the class of the RMAC and we'll represent them RMAC well in playoffs. It'll be interesting to see if they're able to pull a first round by.
Grand Valley would have to lose as well as Minnesota Luth. It looks like right now they're looking at a number three seed. Penning again, assuming that they can beat Western State at home next week in the, in the last game of the season up there in Shatter. Well, it was a competitive game for the most part up until late in this one where Shadron pulled away and the defense came up huge for the Eagles. They improve to 9-1 and one overall, 8-0 and oh in conference, 6-0 and oh on the road. Well, Mesa State is now at 6-4 and four overall and 6-2 and two in conference. Well, I, I think that this uh, Shadron bunch has got a chance to, uh, you know, to do well in playoffs. I, I think they, especially at home, uh, they're tough at home. I witnessed a triple overtime win last year uh, against Abilene Christian where they were down by 28 points with 12 minutes to play. So they're awful tough at home, and I think that they're going to get a home playoff game. I think they got a great shot at winning that and getting into this in the next round, which could be the it's the second round and then possibly even going into the quarterfinals. Well, Shadron State is now 13 and 5 all time against Mesa State. They won last year 7 to 6 and they win today 27 to 16. And it's unfortunate you know, that you we have a large number of seniors from uh, the Mesa Mavericks and it's unfortunate they couldn't win their last game here at Stoker Stadium and as they bring it into their career since they are on the road next week. Uh, but again, they have nothing to be ashamed about. They are, they're a good football team. They just got beat by a better team today. And, uh, you know, they've, they've got to get get up. Uh, they, they've got a tough one next week at Kearney. And if Kearney loses, that, that could be huge for well, Mesa State. Well, it would. Uh, you know, as far as the postseason bid to uh, to the Rotary Bowl there, um, it, it, uh, it would seem to me that it would be between Mesa and Mines. But M uh, Mesa has the head-to-head -head win over Mines as far as the conference picture is concerned. Uh, so it'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. Next week will be uh, uh, key for both these teams as well as the entire country as we, as we go into that last regular season. Shatter and State continues to roll.